This is VOA News via remote. I'm Marissa Melton. Ukraine on Wednesday welcomed the range of Western sanctions imposed against Russia for its menacing actions in eastern Ukraine, while Kiev's Security Council called for a national state of emergency, and the government recalled its ambassador to Moscow. Tensions mounted two days after Russian President Vladimir Putin decreed the eastern Ukraine regions of Luhansk and Donetsk were independent states and sent what he characterized as peacekeeping forces across the Ukrainian border, stoking fears of a broader conflict with the one-time Soviet Republic, which has been independent since 1991. Several Ukrainian state websites, including the government and foreign ministry homepages, could not be accessed on Wednesday. Ukrainian authorities said this week they had seen online warnings that hackers were planning major attacks on government agencies, banks, and the defense sector. Kiev blamed Moscow for the cyber attacks, although Russia has denied any involvement. The head of Ukraine's National Security and Defense Council called a nationwide state of emergency for 30 days, subject to parliamentary approval. The Ukrainian foreign ministry advised against travel to Russia and urged anyone there to leave immediately, contending that Moscow's aggression could curb its ability to provide consular services. Meanwhile, Russia began evacuating its diplomatic posts in Ukraine, and by Wednesday afternoon, the Russian flag was no longer flying over its embassy in Kiev, where police have surrounded the building. The United States, European Union, Canada, Britain, and Germany took a variety of actions Tuesday to punish Russia and promised harsher sanctions if Russian troops advanced further into Ukraine. You can keep up on all the stories we're covering, particularly the Ukraine stories, at our website, voanews.com. The jury began deliberating Wednesday in the case of three police officers from Minneapolis in the U.S. who were linked to the 2020 killing of George Floyd. AP's Julie Walker reports. The jury began deliberating Wednesday in the civil rights case of three former Minneapolis police officers connected to the killing of George Floyd in 2020. J. Alexander King, Thomas Lane, and Two Tower charged with depriving Floyd of his right to medical care when Derek Chauvin pressed his knee into the black man's neck for nine and a half minutes as he pleaded for air. King and Tower charged with failing to intervene to stop Chauvin from the killing which he was convicted of. The defense said the officers didn't willfully violate Floyd's rights. The proceedings are not being televised because the federal court does not allow cameras. I'm Julie Walker. A Moroccan appeals court in Casablanca on Thursday confirmed the conviction of dissident journalist Suleiman Rasuni to five years in prison for sexually assaulting a man. It's a case that has outraged many human rights advocates in the country. Rasuni has denied the charges against him. He was arrested in May of 2020 and convicted in July. He's an outspoken critic of public policy, the judiciary, and Morocco's human rights record, Rights activists believe authorities in recent years have increasingly used criminal charges to target political opponents and dissident reporters. The government says the judiciary is independent and that courts and the police are only implementing national laws. U.S. President Joe Biden has interviewed at least three candidates for the Supreme Court. That's according to a person familiar with the matter, matter who spoke on condition of anonymity. The White House on Tuesday reiterated that Biden remains on track to make a final selection by Monday. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki says Biden has not made a decision on whom to nominate, but he is known to have interviewed Judges Katanji Brown-Jackson, J. Michelle Childs, and Leandra Kruger. It was not clear whether the president has interviewed any additional candidates. Aid groups warned on Wednesday that a spike in COVID-19 infections and an alarming measles outbreak have compounded the health emergencies in Afghanistan, stretching the impoverished, war-torn country's fragile health care system. The International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies said in a statement that urgent global support, including health and testing services, as well as vaccinations, are needed to slow the spread of the coronavirus that is surging across Afghanistan. The statement said the World Health Organization has reported that almost half of tested samples are coming back positive, including an alarming spread, indicating an alarming spread of the virus. Marissa Melton, via